Are you tired of manually spinning up services or virtual machines in your home lab just to learn about cybersecurity? Well, look no further because in this video, we're gonna walk through how to automate your cybersecurity home lab using Docker containers. But first, welcome to the channel or welcome back. My name is John Good and on this channel, we talk all about cybersecurity. If you enjoy the content, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you think of any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Also make sure to check out the description for more training and resources. All right, let's do this. So first of all, what is a home lab? Well, it's somewhat like it sounds where it's a lab of equipment or services that you can access at home. As a cybersecurity professional or a tech professional, one of the most important things that you need is the ability to practice new skills and try out new things. You would never wanna try something brand new at work on your production network because there's so many things that can go wrong that you could just basically cost yourself your job if you started experimenting on a network at your job. Also, as somebody who's brand new to the industry, either just trying to study for a certification or you're in a degree program, you need a place to test out things just for learning purposes. Home labs are huge when it comes to learning about cybersecurity because they give us a safe place to experiment new skills or tools and to learn about security vulnerabilities. Today, most home labs use virtual machines, which allow us to run several instances or virtual computers on a single physical system. That's great because 20 years ago, you might need to actually go out and buy multiple computers if you want to test things out. Unfortunately, one of the problems with home labs, even with just using virtual machines, depending on what you're trying to do, it can actually take you a while just to set up your environment. One of the things that I've learned in my career is that the more obstacles or barriers that you have or the harder it is to set up some of this stuff, the less likely you're gonna do it. Fortunately, there's a way that we can set up things in just a few short commands and you'll be up and running in no time. In this video, we're gonna be using Docker to create vulnerable containers so that you can learn about some of the common vulnerabilities that exist. If you aren't familiar with what containers are, containers take virtual machines even further by packaging them up with everything together. So that's the code, the runtime, system tools, system libraries, and settings. This improves the security, it speeds up the process, and it's a much more efficient way of doing things. For this video, we're gonna be using Linode to host our lab in the cloud. And if you look in the description, I've actually included a referral link for you that'll give you a $100 credit that's good for 60 days so you can play around with Linode. That's $100 for free, why not? Alternatively, if you wanna host your lab in AWS or your home lab, make sure that you watch my videos on how to make a home lab in AWS and on the best computer for cybersecurity. That way you have a powerful enough computer for the environment that we're gonna spin up here. Even though we're using containers, you wanna have a computer that's powerful enough and that gives you enough resources so it doesn't slow down in the middle of testing things out. All the other links that you need for this video, including my GitHub, which has all the commands required, can be found in the description. All right, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is you need to go to Linode and use the link that I've included in the description so you can get your free $100. And then on the left here, you'll click Linodes and then create Linode. All right, for the image, we're gonna use Ubuntu and we're gonna use the newest version, so this 21.10 version. Click that, the region, go ahead and select what's closest to you. I'll use the California region here. For the plan, you can select anything that you want. I'm gonna do shared CPU and then this nanode one gigabyte. That's the lowest cost one for this that I'm gonna use. If you're gonna spin up a lot of vulnerabilities in here, you could use a higher resource one, but for now, I'm just gonna use this one. And I'm not gonna change much else. I'm gonna leave the label as it is. I'm gonna put in a super secret password here. All right, and then I'm gonna keep scrolling down here. And that's all that we need to do. So we're gonna hit create Linode. All right, so that's provisioning. Once that's done, we'll come back and we'll continue. Okay, so now that it's running, we need to actually copy this SSH access line here. So we'll copy that and we'll open up a terminal window. All right, so let's go ahead and SSH into here. And we'll say yes. Go ahead and enter your password and hit return. And there we are logged into our Linode now. Okay, now we're logged in. So we need to actually install Docker now. So we'll go ahead and do that. So if you get an error like this, what you actually need to do is you need to do apt and you need to do update. We'll go ahead and do that and that will update all of our packages. All right, so now we need to install Docker. So let's go ahead and run that command again. All right, so now we need to enable Docker. So we'll go ahead and use this command here. And now there's a user modification that we need to make. So we'll go ahead and use this command here. And now we need to install Docker Compose. So we'll use this command here. And we'll say yes. 
I hope that you're enjoying the content so far. If you are, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Also, make sure to check out the description for more training and resources. All right, let's get back to the content. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is we need to go to my GitHub. So this is my GitHub right here under the Volhub Lab. And we'll click Code. And we need to copy this address right here. So we'll copy that. And we'll go back into our Linode instance here. And we'll type git clone. And we'll paste that in there. Now that's going to actually copy or clone the repository from my GitHub to this Linode instance. Now if we list the directories here, we have that Volhub lab folder. So we'll go ahead and we need to change directories into there. Now we're going to spin up the vulnerable containers. And depending on how many containers that you have in here, if you've added others, it might take a while, especially with this because I've customized it to include Kali. It will take a little bit of time just to spin everything up that initial time. Now that all the containers are spun up, we can actually do Docker PS, and that will show us what's running here. Now, something really important here is you do have these ports that are being redirected here. So if we take that port, that 49158, and we go back to our web browser here and we copy our IP address for our Linode. Let's go ahead and open up a new tab and let's type 49158. That's going to take us to our vulnerable container here. So then you can interact with it however you need to to exploit that vulnerability. I'm not going to walk through how to do these, but that way you can actually start messing around and practicing and learning these vulnerabilities. If we go back to the command line, we can actually use this command right here and we can interact at the command line with our Kali instance that's included in the containers. And there we go. We're at the command line for our Kali instance. And then if we type exit, it'll just go back to our regular command line. Now, if you want to shut down all your containers that you have, you just have to use this docker compose down command. So we'll run that and that will shut down all of our containers. And one thing that you'll notice is if you use that lowest tier Linode, that nano Linode, sometimes you will run into issues like this where your resources start getting taken up because you just don't have that many resources. So kind of depending on how you're going to do it, you might have to use a higher level one. But again, just for our purposes of practicing this, this is fine. So if you actually want to modify this home lab, what you can do is you can go to my GitHub page and this Docker compose file, that is where the brains are at. So that's where everything is being configured from. So I copied that into a text file and I'll show you here in a second how we're gonna modify that. So this does come from the Volhub project and that is linked here on my GitHub page. So if we go there, you can see that they have all these different vulnerabilities that are there, all right? And then there is a folder structure just like I have on my GitHub. And you can see here on the left, I've split the screen. So this is my YAML file on the left here and that's what's configuring all of our stuff. So if we go over here and we just select one. So again, look at the file structure, the folder structure. We have this apparel, so we're gonna click that. So what you would have to do is, you have to download all this contents and make that folder. So again, we'll go back here just so you can see this. So you'll see I have these different folders, so you have to keep that folder structure, okay? And then, so we'll go forward here. And if you look in this Docker Compose file, it's gonna give you some configurations. So for this particular one, we would go here and we wanna modify this. So we're gonna call this exactly what it is. And we're gonna use this information. So we would actually copy this stuff over here. And basically you're just gonna make it look exactly like the other ones. So we're gonna have the ports, and then what we need to also do is we need to also add this volhubnet address. So we'll copy that from a previous one and we need to give it a different IP address than we've already used. Now I've included the ones that I've already added and of course you can remove or add as you need to, but we already have through .12 taken, so this would have to be .13. And the only other thing that you have to do too is you have to get this container name in there because that will name it. And then that way, whenever you run this with the updated configuration file, it's gonna spin up that new vulnerable container with everything else. 
And now if you want to go ahead and power off or remove your instance on Linode, if you're still on this screen, you can do power off or you can hit these three little dots. And then you have the delete. You can also go back to the Linode section if you've migrated away from that and go ahead and click on your instance, hit the three little dots and hit delete. And we're gonna delete that Linode. Now it's completely shut down and completely removed from our account. Just keep in mind that if you don't shut down your Linode, it's gonna keep charging you for whatever instance type or whatever resources that you're using on Linode. So make sure to shut it down if you're not using it. Question of the day. For your home lab, do you prefer the cloud or do you prefer physical gear? Do you prefer virtual machines or containers? Let me know down in the comment section below. In this video, we walk through how to automate your cybersecurity home lab using Docker containers. Remember that there's a lot of ways to build home labs out there, but the more that you can automate the setup, the easier it's gonna be for you and the more that you'll wanna study and the more you'll get out of it. Also keep in mind that the environment that we built throughout this video is meant to have vulnerabilities in the containers. So I wouldn't recommend using it for any kind of sensitive data. As always, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Check out the description for more training resources, and I'll see you next time.